First of all, I give it our praise to God and honor to our pastor, Pastor Shelby Tate, and to our first lady, Sister Doris Tate, and to the members of the Rose here at Missionary Baptist Church. We'd like to say good morning. And we thank God for another opportunity to be in the house of prayer one more time. And we're going to endeavor today to be able to say something in behalf of heaven. And we pray that as we, uh, we go through and as we finish, that we'll all come away with a, a thought or come away with something that we might be able to use to apply to everyday life and give us that direction in which God wants us to look at and at the same time come away better uh, on tomorrow than we was on yesterday. All right? We have a lesson today. It's a very good lesson. We're still dealing with the word wisdom. And by now, we should all have a good understanding of what wisdom is. And we believe that if we've been paying close attention and if we have been meditating on it, we have been able to see what wisdom dictates and how, as we follow it, what benefits it can give to us, not only in a Christian life, but in our everyday life, because wisdom covers all facets. Now, the wisdom that I'm speaking about is godly wisdom. Now, realize that wisdom of the world, it would do so much, but it, it in no way uh, can compare to the wisdom that comes from God. All right, we're going to go move forward, and we're going to, uh, our subject is faith and wisdom today. And so we're going to look at those two words, and most Bible scholars are very much familiar with the word faith, and then we, we know we've been dealing with wisdom, and we're going <clears> to <throat> reiterate those two definitions, and we're going to try to put them into the context of the lesson for today. But we're going to, first of all, we're going to have a scripture this morning, and then we're going to have a word of prayer, and then we're going to move on into the lesson. Now, the scripture in which we are coming from today is Hebrew, uh, of the book of Hebrew, it's the eleventh chapter, and uh, to begin reading at the first verse. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Therefore, we have one verse, so we see uh, what the word wisdom is, and we will come back a little later, and we're gonna uh, uh, look at that definition again in the context of our subject faith and wisdom. All right, let's bow ahead for a moment of prayer, and then we will go a little bit further. <clears throat> I Heavenly Father, as we come before your presence once again, we thank you, dear Father, for this day. We thank you, Father, for things being well with us are, and we come realizing, dear Father, that you've been good to us, that you've been better to us, that we've been to ourselves. We come not taking this moment for granted, because we realize, dear Father, that there were many that stood on yesterday, but today they have gone to the land unknown. But you have looked at and had mercy, and you have found favor that you allowed our golden days to roll on while long. So as we stand and proclaim these words in the name of heaven, we ask the Father that you give us the direction and the understanding whereby we may be able to use what the lesson is trying to tell us and what it dictates, and then use it and apply it to everyday life, whereby it may be able to help us that we Walk this Christian journey with patience. We ask a special blessing for the sick and afflicted that among us, <clears throat> those that we know as well as those we do not. We pray also to the Father that you look at that man, woman, boy, or girl that's wavering in the street, that don't know you in the apartment and in sin. We ask the Father that you have mercy on them as well. Don't forget those that are incarcerated, those that are behind prison bars. They're crying out and calling upon your holy name and realizing, the Father, that they have made mistakes in life but they are praying, dear Father, that you have mercy on them where mercy can be found. And realize, dear Father, that we live in a world right now whereby there's a pandemic on every hand and many are losing their lives in this pandemic. I realize, dear Father, as you sit high and you look low, I realize, dear Father, nothing escapes your sight. But at the same time, what will be, will be. But I pray, dear Father, that you give us strength and give us that Fiction and faith, lean and depend on you, from which all I help you flow. As I'm speaking here at Rose Hill Missionary Baptist Church, we pray to Father that you look at our pastor, as always, Master. 
asked him for that you strengthen him, heal him, and give him the strength to continue on preaching an uncompromising gospel where some lost man, woman, boy, or girl may come with a will and desire to be saved. And I pray, Father, that you never forget his companion to walk by his side daily. Realize that, Father, we have not seen her in a while, but we pray, to Father, uh, that you keep her, that you, you lead and guide her, and I pray, to Father, that you strengthen her as well and give her the line to keep on keeping on. We ask a special blessing for Rose Hill this morning, but not only Rose Hill, but all church doors that are opening your name, preaching an uncompromising gospel. Then, then Father, when we have uh, done all that we can do on the side of life, you say, well done. Give thee river souls a resting place somewhere in your kingdom, where we can praise your name throughout eternity. Do you know blessing with us in our son named Jesus Christ? Amen. <clears throat> Again, we say we're looking at two words today, faith and wisdom. Now, if we, if we want to look at the definition, definition of those two words in conjunction with our lesson today, that first of all, as we said a moment ago, what is faith? And according to Hebrew, the Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Also, <clears throat> the other word that we've been dealing with for a month or so now, wisdom. It's a wisdom, the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment, the quality of being wise. So we put those two words together and we'll see what James is trying to, to relate to us today and how if these two components are put together in the, in the right perspective with the Holy Spirit guiding us, we can see how they work very well in our lives and at the same time give us the mind to be able to be more obedient and at the same time see the benefit in which God gives us if we will follow these two uh, elements. Now we're going to go ahead and a little bit further, we're going to read our our scripture text for this morning, and then we'll go right into the lesson. Our, our devotional reading is coming from Isaiah 40, 40th chapter, 1st through the 8th verse, background scripture, James 1, 1 through 11. Our printed text is the same, James 1, 1 through 11, and it reads as follows. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work is patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that gives to all men liberally and unabraded, not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. But the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, but it withers the grass, and the flower thereof falleth and the grace of the fashion of his perishing. So also shall the rich man fade away in his way. May Lord have blessed to the reading, to the hearers, and above all to the doers of his word. Now, our theme for the quarter is many faces of wisdom. And today's theme, which is unit three, is faith and wisdom in James. Now we said a week ago, so ago that James, James is the half-brother of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, it, it said that originally James, as well as his other brothers and sisters, 
uh, did not accept uh, Jesus Christ as being who he said he was. And we realize being that background, when someone grows up with you and, and then the Lord has put his hands on them, it is hard for people to accept them because they look at him as being familiar and they look at him as his past. But Jesus Christ is, is different than men were. Whereby he's been God all the time. And it wasn't that he turned to faith. He was God incarnated in flesh from the very moment of his birth. All right? Now, going back to James again, James, <coughs> James finally embraced after, after the crucifixion of his, his half-brother, the Lord and Savior. And he was one of the uh, uh, first pastors of the early church in Jerusalem. But today, as he, as he speaks, he's trying to uh, get his brethren to see and understand uh, what the Lord had done with him as for faith and wisdom. Now, he starts off in the scriptures by uh, indicating uh, what a very simple phrase. It's a phrase of greeting. And he said, he said James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in biblical history, James never uh, used or uh, tried to uh, promote himself on the, on, the, on the fact that he was a Lord God brother. And, and that he never <clears throat> used that in any form or fashion to elevate himself. But he, he only uh, uh, described himself as the servant of God of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, that, and as Christian brothers and sisters, uh, that is what all of us are supposed to be doing. We are servants. Of who? Of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that whatever we do is not for our own glory, but it's for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And James, and knowing that Christ is his half brother, uh, his focus was not on the flesh, his focus was on the spiritual. Uh, God that he knew of and how God had had elevated him from just being a, a carpenter's son to one of the first pastors of the early church. Now, I uh, <clears throat> say, James, therefore, writing to ethnic Jews who have accepted Jesus Christ as a Messiah, they are scattered about the region. Now, uh, James knew that uh, after the day of Pentecost it came, that, that when the Holy Spirit came, and that uh, the Spirit fell on all flesh. And that from that moment on, there was a scattering uh, of brothers and sisters from Jerusalem to all regions round about the, Mediter <coughs> the Mediterranean world. And uh, but <coughs> James is writing to them to, uh, to encourage them and to send greetings to them that he is praying. And, but he wanted to make sure that uh, the brothers understood certain things. Now, he, this is why the word in our lesson today comes in, which is faith. Now, he spoke about a trying faith. Now, most of us are very familiar with the fact that we live in a, in a in a very uh, chaotic world. And, uh, and those of us say that we have faith, uh, the Lord and everything, and made sure that certain circumstances had put that faith to a test. But James wanted to let, let it be known that uh, we're gonna be tested. And he said in, in, in verse two, my brother counted it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. As a child of God, we're, we're living in the world, but not part of the world. But that doesn't mean that Satan would not try to tempt us. It doesn't mean that Satan uh, would just let us alone because we are children of God. He is continually coming before the throne of grace with complaints and everything to the Lord concerning 
his people. And so therefore, <clears throat> we must be vigilant, but at the same time, we serve a God that knows that man and everything, his, his, his spirit is willing, but his flesh is weak. So therefore, we will face temptation. But, he said, James said, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Now, someone asked us, how can I find joy uh, when temptation is trying to get me to do something that is not pleasing in the sight of the Lord? We can count it all joy that the Lord himself uh, lived in the flesh as a man. He was tempted as any other man has been tempted, but he yielded not. But, uh, but James wanted to let us know that, he says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worked with patience, that as, as you grow in grace, and as temptation come and temptation go, and how you respond to those temptations, you, you will get a little bit stronger each time. Each time you fall behind the temptation and everything, and you recover yourself, you have a desire to, to not go that route again. And you will, you will continue to look to the hill from which comes your help, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ, and ask him to give you strength to deal with the problem and the temptation when they come again. But during the time that you are uh, asking the Lord for this, you got to be continually praying and, and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you in a way that you must go. And while you are working out your soul salvation in faith, there's a word that comes in that we must have, and that word is, <clears throat> is patience. We got to have patience, and we got to wait on the Lord, and we endure. Yeah, sometimes things seem to be pretty hard, and, and sometimes it seems like the darkest hour is just go done. But we got to have patience and trust in the Lord that He is true in what He said, that He is with us, and that He will be there with us, and everything and that we can always depend on him. And we know the Lord himself, <clears throat> when he makes a promise, he's not slacking his promise as men are, and that we can count on the Lord to be able to do what he said he will do. Now, James goes on to say, but let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. <clears throat> now, he does not say that uh, we will become perfect in this flesh. We will not. Uh, 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 because we live in sinful flesh. Alright? But what he's saying is that our motive and our mind and our heart and our desire to please God, whereby we are obedient to the Lord's will. We are perfect in that aspect because our heart and mind and the wisdom that we are using indicates that we are doing nothing but what the Lord wants us to do. We're building a life that the Lord will be pleased with, and that very life will do everything it can to benefit mankind, as opposed to being something that, that will cause problems that the Lord has to deal with, all right? So therefore, that phrase that we are the salt of the earth, therefore, we will be doing everything we can to put flavor in it, and, uh, and salt to whatever we do in, in mind, thought, mannerism, and deed. All right? Now, let's look a little bit further. <clears throat> when our faith is being tried, it's being tried by many things. All right? And James spoke about uh, the diverse, or uh, the diversity of uh, the, uh, the nature of temptation. So therefore, I so said, what are you saying right there? So therefore, temptation comes in many forms and fashion. And we got to be very careful and everything, and, and we got to be uh, very vigilant about which way that Satan will come. And, and Satan's been at this for many, many years, ever since mankind been on, on the earth. He knows how 
and knows what it is that you like. And when he senses and knows that, that's how he will come to you and this is how he will approach you. As with the first man and woman that was on the planet, Adam and Eve, he saw that, that uh, the fruit that the woman looked at was very appealing to the sight. And so therefore, things that are appealing to us, this is where Satan works. And so therefore, we know, according to biblical history, uh, that that pleasing of the eye led to a desire to have something that the Lord had prohibited them from having, but the temptation to have it was still there. All right? But in our day and time, temptation comes in many forms, we said. It comes in a manner of personal finance. Uh, that those who feel that I have money, and I have power, and I have authority, I, I can do by what I want to do. And the temptation of that is very great. And so, so nothing wrong with having wealth. But don't let wealth <clears throat> dictate or take over your mind to the point whereby it leads you into all temptation. You give that, to, that desire. Since I have the money, I can do anything. I can have anything I want. All right? Then there's something else called favoritism. That's another temptation. We can see people and everything and in our daily life. And uh, certain people we say we like. And so therefore, we're very, uh, very liberal to them. And we, we will work with them. We give them what they want. But other that we say we don't like, we will not do anything for them. There are classes that we have on our job that speak about unbiased or biased emotion. And so therefore, the temptation to do that and everything is very prevalent in our society. Now the other thing uh, which will try our faith is economic injustice. Now we live in a situation where right now we're saying that people that are uh, uh, put at a, a disadvantage because they have not much. And they say that the, the weight of society is always put on the back of the poor. And therefore, the one who can afford it least is the one that has to pay the most. And when we know, if we've been around here in length of time, we know that that is the case. And the rich always seem to have that weight. They say if you have the money, you have the power. So therefore, you can do what you will. And so, so, so therefore, uh, we look at it as economic injustice. The poor man would never be able to, to compete with a man that has wealth. Now, I'm not saying that all wealthy people are bad people. But for those of us who know and everything, mankind's heart and mind, when he had uh, many wealth, he doesn't feel that he has a depend on the Lord. He doesn't feel that he has to look to anyone for anything, that uh, he has everything all taken care of. Now, I, so therefore he is, or she is, uh, 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 able to feel that I can do what I want because I got the money. And, and, and the last one is called exploitation. Now, uh, again, those that are rich and everything exploit the poor. It said those that are that are rich that keep getting richer and the poor keep getting poor. Now the wisdom that that uh, James is speaking about, he said, is that having the faith in the Lord and then putting that together with wisdom is that uh, we shouldn't have to worry if we operate in this fashion and with this mindset. It's a, it's a, but let patience have a perfect work. Now, see, patience here, it will allow you to be able to see there is a benefit from being patient. There is a benefit for allowing God's wisdom uh, to be able to guide us and at the same time to face too. Now, since our time is running, running fast, we will say a few more things and then we'll prepare to close out. Say the contact, 
the concept of faith in temptation is related to the idea of undergoing trials or trying time. James wants believers to know that all suffering should increase our patience. And, and once we, our patience has been established, then we can seek God's wisdom. And it's saying, God's wisdom is a gift. And James instructs his readers to ask God for wisdom, but doubting not. See, anytime we, are, we uh, pray and ask God, uh, and we're not totally sure or confident in what we are praying and asking for, uh, it's a phrase you call, we are praying amiss. It means that that prayer is going nowhere because there's a certain amount of doubt in your mind when you're making the prayer. And so, so a child of God should be confident, steadfast, in whatever they're asking God for, that God will truly bless them. And they can come away with the assurance that God hears their prayer because they prayed in sincerity. And it's always said that uh, God always blessed the desire of a sincere heart. All right? And in my final statement, it's called handling weight. It tells us that as God blesses us with wealth, we must know how to handle it. And many people always say to themselves that, uh, oh, I wish I would win the lottery, a lot of whatever. <clears throat> but the, the question becomes, would, will you be able to handle that kind of a wealth? First of all, I don't know if I can or not, uh, but I'd like to give it a try. But at the same time, uh, will you be able to handle the wealth, or will the wealth be handling you? And that is something you got to keep in mind. But Finally, as James said, in the midst of trial that this life presents, we ask God to teach us to seek wisdom and guidance for our daily life, and God is the only true source of what is that is good. And we got to always pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and thought to remember, in every aspect of life, God invites us to seek his wisdom. So there will be no excuse. On the day of judgment, God said, I have given you everything that you need and every opportunity to be able to stand and be a child of mine. Because if you, if you accept the wisdom that I have given freely and having the faith that it is and will be, you will be blessed. May God bless you and may God keep you in my prayer. Amen.